Tropical Storm Ian has increased in strength. I'm Mike Nasa with this 11 p.m. update, about 11.30 at the time of this recording, Sunday night. I wanted to give you a new update because Ian has been strengthening quite quickly this evening since my last update around 5, 6 o'clock Sunday night, and we are now on the precipice of hurricane intensity. Here is the latest on Tropical Storm Ian as of 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Ian was at 17.3 north, 81.4 west, Winds up to 65. When I spoke to you about 5 or 6 hours ago, because this update's about 11.30 p.m., when I talked to you 5 or 6 hours ago, it was only at 45 miles an hour. It's now jumped to 65. That is a big difference. And the pressure is 989 millibars. And when I last spoke to you, it was over 1,000 millibars. So this has strengthened pretty quickly throughout Sunday night. It's moving northwest at 13 miles per hour. So it's not moving west anymore. Now it is a northwesterly component. And it should be a hurricane very near Grand Cayman Island overnight and early tomorrow. And then by tomorrow night be approaching western Cuba. And then become a major hurricane impacting western Cuba early on Tuesday. After that there's a lot of variables in play. There's a lot of different factors. The thinking from the National Hurricane Center is a Category 4 Tuesday and Wednesday over the uh, areas there of the southeast Gulf. A major Category 3 Wednesday night. And then coming ashore Thursday as a weakening hurricane, but very large and impactful somewhere along the west coast of Florida. It could be anywhere from areas there of Fort Walton Beach, Destin, and the Panhandle, all the way down to Naples. Right now it appears that the Big Bend area and the Tampa-St. Petersburg area is in the line of sight for a direct landfall, but again, we could have storm surge on the uh, east side and impacts far away from the center, and it's still too early to say. I did want to tell you that we do have hurricane warnings in effect for uh, western Cuba, including the Isle of Youth. We also have a hurricane warning in effect for Grand Cayman Island. We have a tropical storm warning for uh, areas there of central Cuba and for the lower Florida Keys from Seven Mile Bridge all the way westward to Key West, including the Dry Tortugas. You guys are under tropical storm warnings. We have a tropical storm watch for Little Cayman and Cayman Brock here in the islands. And we now have a tropical storm watch from Inglewood, southward to Chukalooski, Florida here with the expectation of tropical storm conditions. This will all be changed to warnings and then hurricane watches and then hurricane warnings probably as time goes on. The uh, track again to the northwest and then the north. The uh, latest satellite imagery is looking rather foreboding. Look at that convection blowing up here right over the center. This is clearly set to blow. It has good upper level outflow. It looks well organized enough to start strengthening and now we are going to see it take off into a hurricane and then a major hurricane. The Cayman Islands, you guys are right in here, and so you are in the uh, line of fire from Tropical Storm Ian. The computer models, I showed you a lot of them a few hours ago on our update. These are the model tracks, and again, they have been shifting to the east throughout Sunday, and the Hurricane Center track is now further east than it's been, and it might even go further east than that. So if you are in Tampa... If you are in Clearwater, if you are in Sarasota, if you are in St. Petersburg, you guys along the coast may be in for a direct hit from a powerful hurricane. But again, impacts will be felt further away from that. Now what's going on with this track? I'm going to try and lay it out. We have a trough here moving through the United States, and we have high pressure to the north of the tropical storm moving clockwise to the north of our counterclockwise tropical cyclone. We are thinking that this system will round the ridge and continue to the northwest and then over western Cuba as a tropical storm, then a hurricane, then a strong hurricane. And then it will get captured a little bit by this trough or influenced by the trough and move to the northeast. However, the Hurricane Center believes that this trough is going to miss Ian and leave it behind here in weak steering currents. And that's why it takes one, two, three days to move over the Gulf, allowing it to weaken, sucking in drier air and more uh, cooler waters and kind of straddling western Florida and weakening before landfall. Nevertheless, impacts would be very great, including rainfall and flooding and storm surge. There is a chance that Ian could feel the trough more directly and end up turning more quickly right into Florida, like the European model was showing. But again, that's been the problem. Some of the models taking it further to the west and slower, others taking it further to the east and faster. It's all dependent on this troughiness and the interaction with Ian to the south there in the Caribbean Sea. 
Rainfall is going to be a big problem. Now, this is over the next three days. This is from the National Weather Service, and they're saying up to 10 to 15 inches over water. But look at here. We're starting to get 4 to 6 over the Florida Peninsula to say nothing of further north where you guys are going to get it all the way up into Jacksonville and Tallahassee eventually. And this is only going to spread further and further as the system gets closer. And again, if it does take a track where it slowly moves for one, two, three days very close to the west coast, these rainfall totals are going to go way, way up. And so you're going to want to watch that because that will increase the threat of flash flooding. Right now we have a slight risk from areas of Tampa and Orlando south throughout the next three days, but this will likely spread further north as time goes on. Now, I wanted to mention storm surge. Now, this is a graphic that uh, is from the National Hurricane Center, and this is a depiction of storm surge vulnerability based on the category of the hurricane. Now, right now, it's expected to be a Category 4 hurricane, but then be weakening to a 3 or a 2 or a 1 as it sloshes ashore. But again, it could make landfall as a Category 1. It could make landfall as a Category 4, because we don't know where it will be in terms of landfall and weakening. Now, if it makes landfall as a 1, look at this storm surge threat here in areas of the Big Bend. There is a lot of uh, vulnerability there along the coastline for high storm surges in the Big Bend area and then down here near Naples and areas of Cape Sable. Now, I'm going to say, let's say it has the storm surge. If it's a Cat 4 and it weakens to a 2, let's say, if it has a Category 3 storm surge, look at this flood potential here all along the west coast of Florida, you guys in Homosassa Springs, Spring Hill, Port Ritchie, uh, Clearwater would have a lot of storm surge flooding problems. And that is why this is a very, very serious event. Even if the winds weaken, like the Hurricane Center says, the wind field will be expanding. The key messages on Tropical Storm Ian before you go to bed this Sunday night as of 11 p.m., Number one is expected to produce heavy rain and instances of flash flooding and mudslides, uh, particularly in higher terrain over Jamaica and Cuba. Considerable flooding impacts later this week in West Central Florida. Additional flash and urban flooding and flooding on rivers across the Florida Peninsula and the Southeast cannot be ruled out later this week. Secondly, as I mentioned, life-threatening storm surge and hurricane winds beginning in western Cuba late Monday and then at or near major hurricane strength in western Cuba, and efforts to protect life and property should be rushed to completion. Finally, Ian is expected to be a major hurricane in the eastern Gulf of Mexico during the middle of this week, but there is uncertainty in the track and intensity forecast that is higher than usual. Okay, Regardless of the exact track and intensity, there is a risk of dangerous storm surge, hurricane force winds, and heavy rainfall along the west coast of Florida and the Florida Panhandle by the middle of this week. Residents in Florida should ensure they have their hurricane plan in place. Make sure you got money, cash, ATMs could go out if the power goes out. Make sure you do not use any generators inside. People always die from carbon monoxide when they uh, use their generators inside. Make sure you've got prescriptions filled. If you need to fill a prescription, do it Monday. Have it ready to go and follow any advice given by local officials and closely monitor the updates to the forecast. I know the governor of Florida has already declared a state of emergency. Everybody is going to be taking action come tomorrow and Tuesday as this tropical cyclone becomes a hurricane overnight and tomorrow, and then a major hurricane in the Gulf and takes aim at the state of Florida. Everybody from the Panhandle all the way to the Keys, you guys need to be overlooking your hurricane plans right now and listen to local officials for any evacuations that may be ordered. I'm Mike Naso with this Sunday night update. I'll see you guys later on with continuing coverage of Ian as it becomes a hurricane over the next 24 hours and takes aim at Cuba and the United States.